This is added on to section 20.5. In going through the practice midterm exams, I noticed a new kind of question that I never saw when I was writing my own exams. I saw a little bit different version. So what I want to do is go through sample exercise 20.10 so you can focus on this example in order to learn the method. So when you look at this equation, um, if you take a look in your textbook just to see what the sample exercise is, they're going to be asking you to calculate the E0 of the cell. They're going to ask you to calculate the delta G0, and then they're going to ask you to calculate the K. You're provided with the equations for the last two, and it really is not hard. So I wanted to make a separate video that went through it. So it says calculate first the standard free energy change. But to do that, you need to have the E0 of the cell. To do that, you need to dissect what is the reaction giving you. So if I look at that provided reaction, I see a half reaction. I see Ag as a solid going to form Ag plus aqueous plus an electron. Yes, there is a four stoichiometric coefficient, but you would not see that if you did the half reaction, and this is an oxidation. So now you're looking, you're saying, none of this looks like anything I've ever seen before. And I would agree with you. So as we've been going through this chapter, we said that oxygen gas can play a role in redox if it is present. And it is present in this example. When I look in the back of the book at the Appendix E, what it has is a list of all different redox reactions. Actually, they're half reactions, but the half reactions are used to do a redox. Notice this one has oxygen, uh, the molecule, it has a zero oxidation state, and it goes to form water with a minus two. So that is the reduction. I think this is worth just doing for that reason, because this is new, okay? So when I compare these two equations, I see one electron here, I see four electrons here, and when I multiply the oxidation equation by four, I will be matching the number of electrons. Trust me, if you add them together, you will get the chemical equation. What I want to do here is show you how to calculate the E0 of this cell. It is just the E0 reduction for what is being reduced minus the E0 reduction for what is being oxidized. So here it is the reduced and here it is the oxidized you would be taking those numbers out of a table. But what I like to do with students is write it this way. I like to say, what's being reduced? Oh, it's oxygen going to water. What's being oxidized? Oh, it is silver going to silver plus. I made, and I didn't make this up, I started doing this after working with students because there's so much going on in these problems. If we can direct you a little bit better, that is really good. So when I look in the table of reduction potentials, I come up with a 1.23, I come up with a 0.80 for silver, and I come up with a 0.43 volts for the E04, that given reaction. Now, the E0 here is a positive value, so that says this reaction should proceed as written in the forward direction. But again, they're asking you now to find delta G0, the free energy. So delta G0 has the equation minus NFE0. We just calculated that on the earlier slide. So delta G0 would be a negative, and we have a four electron process. Our Faraday value is 96,485 joules per mole electron volts, and we have a voltage of 0 0.43 volts. When I crunch those numbers together, what I get is the number 165950 joules. That corresponds to a negative, oh, there's my negative sign, negative 165 kilojoules. Try as I might, I am not able to come up with the value of minus 170 kilojoules in your text. Perhaps they are rounding in a different way and I'm not paying attention. But to be brutally honest, oh, I guess I should pay attention. 0.43 volts has only two significant figures. But again, 
What this section was, was having you calculate delta G zero. It is a minus, we'll use their number, 165 kilojoules. And since this is a negative number, it means it is spontaneous in the forward direction. So that is, you know, it's a numerical value, but what it is doing is reinforcing what you learned in the previous chapter. And again, that's what this chapter does. It's tying actually the whole course together because just think of all the different things you're using. So let's move on to the last thing they want you to find. They want you to find the equilibrium constant. And we know there's an expression, delta G zero is minus R T L N of K. So if we want to find the K, what we will say is E to the minus delta G zero divided by R T. Now let me put in the numbers, okay? I'll try to do this carefully. It's a negative, negative, I'm gonna use my old number, 165950 joules divided by 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by 298 because it's at the standard state. That gives me a number, and that's another reason I did this. It gives me the number positive 68.6 that I'm raising my E to, and when I calculate out my K, it turns out to be 6.3 times 10 to the 29th. Now, I'm not gonna argue with the textbook. They write nine times 10 to the 29th. If we're on the order of 10 to the 29th, that is really big. That is much, much greater than one, and that says to us that equilibrium, it is going to lie on the right. It's, it reinforces the positive E, we have a negative delta G zero, and now we have a K greater than one. So when I looked at the textbook, I'll be honest, it looked frightening. You know, there's so many numbers. It goes on and on and on and on. And I said, I don't want my students to be scared. But if you break it down into these easier pieces, it's very, very, very doable. So one of the things I wanted to do, what if, and that is the part B. What if instead of the first equation, you saw something like AG solid, plus one half O2 gas. Oh, we forbid that in 1210. Plus two H plus aqueouses. That goes to form two AG plus aqueouses and two waters as a liquid. Well, all they did was they did a division by two. And the points I wanna make here are your E zero of the cell, it is the same. It does not change based on stoichiometry. It is a measurement of that half cell. So we don't have a change there. It would still be a 0.34 volts. What's gonna happen to our delta G zero? It is a minus NFE zero. So instead of four, now we have a two. So essentially, our delta G zero is cut by a factor of two from part A, and now we have a minus 83 kilojoules per mole. Our last piece, it is the K. And the K is also going to change, and I did the math because I said, well, you know, I wanna do it that way. We have a negative negative eight, 3.3 times 10 to the fourth joules per mole. We are going to divide that by 298K, and we're going to multiply that by 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. That's going to give us a K on the order of 3.5 times 10 to the 14, and your text says four times 10 to the 14, roughly half of what our original K was. Now, this example is really here to show you the interaction. You had to first calculate the E zero, that was number one. Then you calculated the G, that was number two. Then you calculated the K, which is number three. When we move into the next section, it um, is dicey. 
what you're going to have is a, a little bit more chemistry, a little bit more equations. And I'll just say Amy has already asked me some questions that I'm going to build into what I'm going to say when we're together in class in this next section. It is a lot of work. I understand it's really hard. It's been just as hard for me getting ready, not seeing it for two years. I can say, you know, the generalities, but when you get down in the dirt and you got to do the problem, it is very time consuming. So I wish you luck. Please do not get up, give up. This, get up, because we're all sitting down all the time. Um, know that you will see this in your upper level classes, most likely with regards to biological processes. If you're an engineer, you might see some equilibrium constants. But again, this is the gist of electrochemistry in general chemistry. And remember, nobody majors in gen chem. I never had a chance to say that as we've been teaching this last year. There are four divisions of chemistry. There's organic, where I have my PhD, and I do love it. I've never been a fan of Gen Chem, but I've gotten to teach it, so I've learned to love it. There's also analytical chemistry, which is all about measuring things accurately and precisely. There is physical chemistry, which you got a taste of in the thermodynamic chapter. And finally, there is inorganic chemistry, which is what many of your TAs are getting their PhD in. It's really turned more into like a material sciences and it's integrated with medicine. So essentially this class is preparing you for your career if it is in a STEM area. Please uh, study hard, aim high, and let's finish strong. Remember the Lowe's have always had the highest midterm averages. We gotta keep that up. Thank you for your attention and bye.